Good evening, ladies, as well as gentlemen. Puppet Boris here with some more Hearthstone Arena. I took Paladin off my shit list, got him off to 4-0, and, oh, and <clears throat> let's see what happens here. It's been really weird. I've had a lot of... Uh, that, that was my computer, not yours. I've, <coughs> God, I've had a lot of... Oh, God, it's coughing time. <coughs> Good Lord. Better drink some water. Uh. As I was trying to say for like four times now, I've had a lot of these arenas where I start off with a really impressive record and then just end up doing terribly, so I have no idea. We're up against Pazerfaust. Sounds vaguely German. Here, oh, I have the game on mute. That's why, um, hang on a second. That's right about there. Okay. Um, I had the game on mute. No idea what's gonna happen. Pazerfaust, German. Okay, I think we're all caught up to speed. Mr. Tinkers, you know, I gotta remember, Harvest Golem is a mech. I don't think I was thinking about that. Wow, in the last video, I totally forgot that Antique Healbot was a mech, and now I just realized I don't think I ever counted this among my mechs in the deck. Huh, okay. Well, anyway, this is a mech, so I could actually get a turn four for four plus a spare part. Unless she has, like, a creature to kill it and then pings off the damaged golem. Lever wow, Mad Bomber has been raking in some kills. I shouldn't speak too soon, of course. There's still a 9 in 27, or no, it can't be 9, that would be a third. 8 in 27 chance, I think? I've really got to do that math at some point. Well, the odds haven't caught up to me yet. I think this is the third time this Serena where someone played a one toughness creature and I killed it with Mad Bomber. Cue everybody to go, Boris Mad Bomber, such a good card! She catches up a card, though, with this Loot Hoarder. So, um, I'm just going to play the Golem. And think, do I kill this, or do I get three extra damage in? Hmm, I'm eating some fruit snacks. They're delicious, and I decided to go for the damage. I know it's contrary to what I ever say, but it's just so likely she's going to run that loot hoarder in. Okay, it happened. She's going to coin for a two-drop with a loot hoarder. Okay. Well, that's a bit annoying, but we do what we do. Let's see what we got. Ah, emergency coin. So do I freeze this thing? Hmm. This could be much better later. Much better. Right now, it stops the loot order from killing the golem. Then she could ping the golem off or use the Annoyatron to finish it off. But I think I'd rather play either the Clockwork Gnome or the Hand of Protection. Hmm. Let me think. Tough call. I'm gonna trust my instincts, we're gonna play this Clockwork Gnome. Maybe that's the wrong move, could very well be. But I'm gonna eat a fruit snack and watch what happens. Now I know the saying is, a good option now is better than the best option later, and it was a decent option to freeze this loot hoarder. But it was also a decent option to play Clockwork Gnome, which would trade with either of these creatures and give me a spare part, so I feel like... My move was not entirely without merit. So next turn I can play one of these things and Hammer of Wrath. F turn 5, which is often awkward, is actually okay here. Under these circumstances. I really hope this thing goes away because if she plays a creature with 4 health or less, Hand of Protection on the Tinkers, Mr. Tinkers, to kill that creature would be very nice. If she plays a creature with 3 toughness or less, I can hammer it. Five toughness, that sucks, that just sucks. Like a water elemental, that would just be the worst. Pretty much. I'd have to pretty much use hand of protection and a hammer to get rid of it. Or freeze it and hope for the best. No! I should have frozen that loot order. Oh my god, I just never learn. Okay, what is this? Time rewinder? No good. Mr. Tinkers would have been a good target for this. Wow, well if I lose the game, it's going to be entirely because of that. Hammer of Wrath on this. I still have to throw the golem at it. That didn't seem worth it. So I guess here's where we're going to use the freezant coolant, whatever thing. Man, hit her in the face. Oh my god. Well, didn't think about Dark Iron Dwarf. And that was the worst possible card to see there. And that was the card she had. So sometimes you just got to pay for your mistakes. So here I'm hoping, well, 
kind of is a win-win either way. If she plays something big, I can hammer and use the recruit to kill the dwarf. If she, play, if she pings the recruit, she can't play anything super big. So I feel like it's all right. Oh, I really wish I could have time rewound Mr. Tinkers. All right, so she's not pinging the recruit, but she dropped that thing. Oh my god, it's Cult Master. Um, mm, yeah, I think this has to happen. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to play this. And now, let's just throw things in. What order do we throw them in? Should I use Seal of Light, actually? Two damage? No, it doesn't actually let me kill anything. So yeah, we'll just do this. See what we get. We'll do this. See what we get. We'll do that. You guessed it, see what we get. And then here, let's just keep it simple. We're going to protect the cult master. So now if she wants to kill this, she has to ping it and throw the dwarf at it, which is more than fair for the cult master. And she does still have a bunch of cards. Ah, she's going to polymorph it. Well, that's fine. I'm pretty okay with that. And she cannot hit this thing. And this is actually looking pretty good. So we're going to just hammer time. Run in the sheep. Make a recruit. And should I attack with this thing? I don't see the point of attacking with it. It might be able to trade into something later, so I might as well just keep it around. Just gonna freeze that. Which is shockingly helpful, because it means that the True Silver plus the recruit does not kill off the Earth from the Frost Elemental. Hi, friggin' Larius. Alright, well, I could do True Silver plus Seal of Light to kill this. True Silver plus this Morgan to kill it. I think we're going to go for that. I see that I have this guy here, but I really think it's worth it to actually develop some better board presence. There's Mr. Trog. So, she has six cards to my seven-ish, plus a weapon. I guess I'm in the lead. I have healing and more healing, so health is not an issue. This guy's pretty big, too, though it dies to Fireball and Polymorph. Yeah, I think if I can just trade one-to-one -one with her, I should be fine in this game. But if she can clear my board and drop something bigger, then I could actually end up in trouble. She has a secret, so I cannot play Guardian. Because I'm just just about done with uh, losing to Mirror Entity. Well, of course, I could play him, and then if she does copy it, I could Seal of Light. The alternative is what? To play the Heal Bot? But I really want to get this bigger body on, especially since she's used up two fireballs. Uh, I think I think it's worth it. I think it's worth it to get that big body. Oh, okay. So most likely secret is duplicate. We know it's not ice armor, vaporize, or mirror entity. Duplicate's the next most likely. Could still be one of the spell ones. I've got a couple of options here. Oh, shoot. If this is duplicating, she actually gets two war golems. That would be pretty bad. Oh, God. Well, I'm going to have to let her have two war golems and just hope I can win the tempo race. Oh, I, uh... No, that was fine. I, th I was thinking I wasted a health by Seal of Lighting, but I had to Seal of Light before I attacked, obviously. Okay, so my plan here is to try to win off of Tempo now. If she does actually play the War Golem, I've got a uh, 10 damage, 15 damage, 17 damage, and I can also time rewind this and threaten the kill plus along with all my creatures. Ah, Fen Creeper. Okay. She's going to ping off the shield, which suggests maybe she's got a Flame Strike in the works, but I'm okay with that because it means that I can use the Recruit to kill off the Creeper. Do I go for the combo? Do I wait for Rocketeer to be able to do time rewound? Or rewound in a timely fashion. Uh, there are a couple of other ways I could do this turn. I could Sunwalker and Seal of Light to kill the Fen Creeper, and then I could time rewind the Sunwalker and replay it. You know what? Let's just go for the simplest option here. Gonna kill the Fen Creeper with that and a recruit. Gonna make a recruit. Hit her for nine damage. And see what she has to say for herself. If she really flame strikes and pings this, then this guy still gets to hit her. 
And then I have the kill with the hammer and the seal, so I think I should be fine. This is good to see, because two health is pretty insignificant. It's not a taunter. Okay, uh, well, it's a taunter now. So, the good news about this is that she spent all of her mana doing this. She couldn't ping off this recruit, so I can run my Justice League and the recruit in here. Then I have four, plus three is seven, plus two is nine damage. Oh, not quite enough. Um, yeah, we'll do it. And, you know, actually, I should have hammered this first. Since I'm not going to kill her, I might as well go for the card up here. Oh, True Silver Champion. Uh, no. There's no reason to rush this. Let's just keep it simple. We've got eight damage being threatened as it is, and then I have another six next turn. So I didn't need to rush out to get the attacks in. I could, I could just take my time here, I think. My big creatures are definitely winning it for me against Palser Faust. Alright, Arcane Explosion pops a shield. Damages this. Oh, she doesn't have the Flame Strike, though. She just draws a card. Should have done that first, though, just in case it was relevant, and then, well, it's just well played. She did the right thing. She just casually passed the turn. I had an extra 4, 7, 9 damage there. So I could have built up to 17 damage. Yeah, we really steam wrecked this person. Steam wrecked! I don't know what that is. Okay, we're on to the next game. Hoping to finish off the daily quest here. And make it to 7 wins. Then I would be above 13,000 gold with a comfortable margin. Which is not too surprising because I've been doing a pretty good job doing the dailies. But I haven't been playing every day. And even if I do play it's often just for 45 minutes. Which isn't even a whole arena run. So realistically I only do like a run every other day or every third day. Depending on how long the run is. And then that just, let, that just lets the daily quest gold build up. Life is good when you're a kingpin. Alright next up is... Feeling Shaman. No, it's another mage. That was the other thing I was stealing. Kudam. Oh, God, I feel like I've seen this name before. There's no way to tell. Similar hand. Very similar. Got the Seal of Light that I... Well, I did use once. Then I got the other one that I never used. And the Mad Bomber. That would be prodigious luck. Really, truly astounding luck if the Mad Bomber actually killed something. Because not only does it mean I had it in my opening hand every time, but it also means that the opponent kept playing things for me to kill. Hey, mate, if Boris, why are you playing this clockwork gnome? If she plays something with one health, then the gnome is going to make you not want to play your bomber. But the thing is, the odds of her actually playing something with one health are really small, so I feel like I've got to do this. And there it is. It's perfect. So I got her to use the coin. Got a spare part, so I didn't technically go down a card. Got Mr. Bomber. And so her coin has been used up. I didn't technically go down a card, and I got the board of advantage early on. If she plays a 3-2, I can kill it with Seal of Light. Yeah, it's looking good. Oh, she plays a 2-3. Well, here I think I'm just going to go for the obvious. We're going to do this. So it's like a 1. It was kind of like a lightning bolt there. But not really because I also didn't deal 3 damage to the face. So it's kind of like I heal your opponent for 3, deal 3 damage. She's a Farseer. Well, that bomber is going to get some work in. It's going to get to kill this Farseer. Oh, hang on a minute. We got some options. I could play the Cult Master and actually throw both of these things at the Farseer. I don't like that. I could play the Seal of Light and make a recruit and use this recruit to kill the Farseer. Or I could just hammer. Why don't I just hammer? Go up a card. Keep my board. Go on for the face. She's had a bit of a slow start, so I doubt she'd have the time to ping this recruit here, though I wouldn't mind if she did. Got a big creature coming up in a few turns. Sadly, none of my Sunwalkers, although Sunwalkers are just prime for... What's his face? Polymorph. Uh, oh, there's Sunwalker. Okay, so unfortunately, if I play Cult Master, this is 4 damage here. It's not enough to kill the Elemental. And then I got nothing. I can throw the Blue Gill Warrior and all these things at it, but then I don't quite have enough to play the Cult Master, which sucks. Well, good option now. Better than the best option later. I'm going to take my two cards... And it's not so great because, of course, the Cult Master now dies to the Elemental. I could time rewind it, but that I think would be dumb. I'll just lose this thing to the Elemental. She'll then have six cards to my seven, soon to be eight. And I'm going to start dropping Sunwalker. So she has to have a big five drop here. She's got to have a good play. Oh, she freezes me. So that means she has a Frostbolt or a Flamethrower for the Cult Master. No, she's just going to replay it later on to heal it. A bit greedy. A bit greedy. Just a bit. Is she going to kill us with a Frostbolt or a Flamethrower still? Looks like she is. No, she's just going to ping my Callmaster. Okay, fair enough. 
Well, I can't Seal of Light or True Silver. Uh, interesting. I could Sunwalker. But I could also Blue Glue Warrior. Why don't we do this? This seems like a fair move. So we get to get another card off of the Cult Master. Mr. Cultsy Waltzy, as she is known. And, um, okay. I'm going to play this engine for sure. So the question is, do I throw Cult Master at the Mana Worm? If I do, kind of sucks because the Cult Master goes away. But if I don't, what's she going to do? Ping this and replay the Elemental? Yeah, let's just do this. I think the Cult Master did enough good there. Alright, so six cards. I have seven in my hand and a Senjin on the board, so I feel like this is okay. That's annoying. And that's also annoying. Okay, great. Grippity Grape Grape. Did I play this just because it's bigger than a Sunwalker? Hmm. I don't think so. So the reason I didn't play this is the Sunwalker doesn't straight up die to Fireball. And I want to put some pressure on her. Also, it's nice having the extra ton here so that I can maybe use a True Silver Champion. She's going to freeze, which is actually okay. I don't really mind that too much. That's most of her turn. And I still get to attack. Of course, oh, I, the Anoyatron stops me from True Silver Ring the Elemental, so that's not as great. Balls. Alright. Well, let's just think. I could play this and Mr. Tinkers. I could play the Sunwalker and a Recruit. I could play Sunwalker, Seal of Light to kill the Noyatron. Why not? Why not do that? The health is nice. I get rid of that dumb thing. Takes the damage off her board. Clears the Tantra out of the way so I can kill the Elemental. Got these Sunwalkers, which are pretty good. If I keep trading one to one, I win because I got a card advantage. This thing, uh, not the greatest at the moment. But I could recharge a Sunwalker or something else. Alright, that's actually kind of annoying because if I had Seal of Light, I could kill it e this thing easily with the True Silver. But as it is, uh, I'd have to throw my Sunwalker at it as well. Hammer of Wrath. Um, yeah, that seems solid. Oh, I should have done this first. Always draw cards first. God damn it. All right, well, anyway. Uh, that's actually nice. Doesn't change my turn, thankfully. So we're just winning a very quote-unquote simple game, just simply using card advantage to win. I'm not doing anything super fancy, just I kill her cards more efficiently than she kills mine, and then we're at seven cards to four. If I keep trading one to one, we're good. All right, Abomination is interesting. It'll kill off the Infiltrator. That's a very desperate Echo of Mediv. I think, I suspect Echo of Mediv is better in ranked than it is in arena. Um, yeah, let's just, let's just do this. Cause if I hit it with the weapon, I still have plenty of health and a bunch of healing. I have 14 points of healing here. And then I get to keep the Sunwalker. So seems like they're smart move. I'm gonna play the Trog. If she flame strikes here, she can kill this and the Sunwalker, but the Ogre would live. And then I still got some stuff to play. Maybe if this turn she doesn't kill the Sunwalker, I would recharge it. Because recharging the Sunwalker doesn't just give it the health back, but it also gives back the Divine Shield, and it's a Taunter, which is useful, so I think it could, could have some merit to do that. Abomination number two. Well, that's the Echo of Mediv copy, so that wasn't really... This is a 9-mana Abomination in two installments. It's not the greatest. So I guess the Sunwalker could just kill this now. It's sort of done its job. The Sunwalker has. The light does not discriminate. Right, she plays that out, because she figures I'm not going to play a secret. Hmm. Uh, let's just keep this simple. We'll kill this... Take a quick look. Can I kill her? Or is this nine? No damage in hand. Okay, so then we'll kill this. Hit her in her fat face. But dock a chunk. Play Sunwalker. That survives Flame Strike. Pass the turn. So again, I'm threatening a lethal here. I got another big creature in reserve. I have this quote unquote combo, which heals me up and gives me a spare part in a 4 4. She pretty much has to do the Flame Strike thing now. Hey, Sarah, that's cute. Is she going to give this taunt? Ah, Mirror Image, that... Wow, Mirror Image, good card here. That does save her, because I have to then spend mm, 10 damage. That was like a 1-minute heal 10. That was pretty good. 
Hammer of Wrath. Does that let me win? Oh, not quite. I can hammer this and then kill the mirror image and then I have seven damage, which isn't enough. Right? Yeah, that's, that's it. Well, I'll just do it. Maybe I'll get some killing power, and I do. Well played. Okay. These games are a bit quicker than the games in the last video. Each game was just 10 minutes. Although, I guess that would end up being about four games anyway, so about the same length, I suppose. 6-0. and oh. I feel like just two arenas ago I was 6-0 and oh. what was it, a druid? I ended up making it to 7. I lost two games at 6-0, and oh, barely crawled into the 7th win, and then just got smashed. So I have no idea. I just don't trust anything anymore. We're just playing some Hearthstone. Is it time for a Shaman? I feel like it's, I feel like a Shaman's got to be coming. No. Well, I clearly can't predict the future. We've all learned that today. Tehi. Why do I have a feeling this is some anime... Japanese movie thing that I don't know about. I was like, oh my god, Tehi is from the Chronicles of Fludvarg. How have you not seen that one, Boris? Jesus, are you an uncultured oaf or what? And I'm like, sorry, I've never seen the Chronicles of Floofwaf or whatever it was the first thing I said. Uh, well met. A Mad Bomber again. Wow, that's just, that's pretty remarkable, honestly, that I get that card so much. Let's see if we're going to take our, uh... What is this? Yeah, so I got, like, I think now I have the 8 and 27 chance of killing this. I could play the Haunted Creeper. Nip. Look at Warrior it is. I've said long ago that Blue Girl Warrior is an important Paladin card because it gives early removal, and we just saw that in action. Okay, so the Shield Bot, the odds of killing it are extremely small. In fact, only 1 in 27. But I think it's worth it to play the Mad Bomber anyway because the odds of at least popping off the Shield and trading are decent. Okay, Mad Bomber hates me, but that's fine. So we got the shield off. Hopefully he doesn't have an Argent Protector to kill this off. And then we get to play this next turn, which is good. All right, he knows not to let Paladins keep creatures, and he plays a Panther, which is pretty solid. Yay, we're playing the, playing the Trog. A 3-5 on turn 4 is usually good. Of course, he gets to turn 4 now, and he can do a bunch of different things to make me suffer. Oh my god, is it a Blessing of Kings? No, it's a Dark Iron Dwarf. Well, that's... Better and worse in some ways, I suppose. Alright, I don't think it's worth hammering this, so we'll just play out all my crap. I have to keep remembering this guy might have a Consecration. If he does, then he's, you know, got a little bit of an edge on me. Just because I don't have one doesn't mean the other Paladins don't. But if he doesn't play a Consecration right here, I might be okay. Alright, that's good. So, let's think about what to do. Oh my god, I have at least three different options. Option number one. Play Cult Master. Run these things into the dwarf and get three cards. And then I get to make a recruit. I'm going to have two one ones and a recruit. And the knowledge that he definitely does not have a Consecration, barring a top deck. Because if he had a Consecration, he clearly would have popped the spider and cleared my board last turn. So, option one. Option two, just play the Sunwalker and sit tight. Option three. Get Hammer of Wrath. Trogzor, get a card, make a recruit, pop the infiltrator. That seems like the weakest of the three. So, do I clear one of his creatures but not the other and get three cards, or do I just play the Sunwalker? If he doesn't have a Consecration, the Sunwalker's going to be good. What is a Paladin going to do to answer Sunwalker? I'm going to do this. I'm not sure it's the right play, but it's the play I'm going to make. I'm just going to leave all this stuff around. If he doesn't have a Consecration, it's going to be difficult for him to deal with this, and then I can play the Cult Master next turn when perhaps I can clear more of his board with all this stuff. God, ah, that might have been the wrong play. I don't know. I could have gotten three cards. I just didn't like how this thing could then kill the Cult Master and live. And then he would get to play a six drop. So then I'd have nothing on the table except for two, two one ones. Let me which seemed like it was a crappy thing to have to deal with. This way I got a four five, so I've got at least a little bit of hitting power. The best thing that could possibly happen is if you were to play Myxna. That's a six drop. She's a two eight with a death touch ability, but she would die to the Stampeding Kodo, and I would win the game. What are the odds? He had a legendary. That Myxna was the card in the pack. It was the best card in the pack. That he drew it, and he's gonna play it now. Very small, but that would be the best thing I can think of possibly happening. And who knows? Maybe one day, if I play Hearthstone long enough, it'll happen. Myxna, no, it's a buff card. Oh, that's not good. What is that? A Shattered Sun Cleric? No, it's an Argent Protector. Well, it could be worse. Could definitely be worse. 
Okay, that was fine. My Sunwalker lived, and I get to play Call Master. So I think uh, Kodo is tempting, but we just gotta play this, this, this Cult Master here. I mean, clearly. Alright, how do uh, what's the best way to distribute all this stuff? I think Seal of Light plus a Recruit on that, Infiltrator on that, Spiders on that, Sunwalker on that, GG. Okay, well, always draw cards first. Wait, that's a little bit off. It's actually better to use the Infiltrator on this and Seal of Light on this guy to take what, one less damage. Yeah. For justice. Oh, I should have kept on drawing cards first. What's wrong with me? Well, whatever. It wouldn't have probably mattered. Hut. Yeah, got another Seal of Light. Okay, Callmaster. Pretty good card. I keep waffling on this thing. I guess it's just sometimes amazing and sometimes mediocre. It's just the rule of it. Depends on your deck. I mean, this deck, I made sure to take some early cards. And um, that helps Cult Master be effective. Oh my god. Well, he, he was desperate. He had to take a chance. I think he made the right play. I think he had to get lucky to even have a shot. I mean, even if he had hit the Cult Master, he was still absolutely screwed. He had a 3-3 three, three, and 3 other cards to my 2 spiders and a fistful of power. Yeah. Alright, 7-0 with Paladin. Glad I took it off the shit list for this. That's great. And... Now, I can just relax. This is a great place to be. Super happy to be here. I think I just played like two games in six minutes. Right? I played three games in 26 minutes? Who cares? Anyway, this is Serena. Oh, oh geez. Not, not the best opening hand. There we go. I like this. I, I like having this sort of a U-shaped curve. Well, it's actually not U-shaped if you look at it. it. It really isn't. It has a hump in the middle like every other curve. But, you know, it feels U-shaped because I took care to take some early stuff and then a relatively fat pile of endgame cards, and it seems to work out. Alright, Little Exorcist. Haven't seen it in a while. Don't mind not seeing it. Honestly, it's usually really bad. You know what it is? I hate the card that ha requires your opponent to have minions on the board, and then it doesn't actually kill the minions, it's just like, a little bit better. Alright, so here I could trade the Infiltrator for the Recruit, and then play the Sun Fairy Protector, just as a 2-3. Or I could keep the Recruit hidden and make a Recruit to trade my Recruit for his. <sighs> I know this is the wrong play. I know it's the wrong play, because he could buff this up somehow, and just be a pain in the ass. So you know what, I'm just gonna suck it up and do it. That was the right play. I think. In my strategic understanding of Hearthstone, I believe that was the right play. Alright, play a Harvest Golem so I can do a little Exorcist. Oh, you suck. So do I coin into a True Silver Champion? Or just play Steel of Light? Coining into the true silver, drawback, it uses a patru uh, my coin. Advantage, I get to kill the thing and have a weapon in hand. Disadvantage, if you played an ooze, one of two things is the case. Either he has another ooze, or he was desperate. I'm going to assume he was desperate. I could have also coined into the trog, but I think I'd rather have the weapon in hand than the trog on the table, because in order to play the trog, I would have needed to kill that thing with my Sun Fairy Protector, and I like leaving this creature out here. And having a weapon in hand, rather than having just a creature on the table. Well, the ooze didn't come flying out, so I don't think he has another ooze. He's gonna hammer it. That's okay. He goes up a card doing that, but then I get to keep my weapon out and play a 3-5, which is good. Hmm. He is, however, up a couple of cards now, because he killed the Infiltrator with the Recruit, and then he did the hammer right here. Do I care about the taunt? I really don't care about the taunt right now, so I'm going to play this. It might discourage him from playing some spells. Seven cards to yeah, six if you count the weapon. And seven if you count the draw. Twilight Drake. I don't have any silences in this deck. Alright, Leper Gnome does give me little exorcist. So I think we got to just do this, right? And then... No need to use Seal of Light here, so we'll just make a Recruit and throw Trogzor and my weapon at that Drake. Well, it's a bit precarious. A Consecration would be a board clear. Then he'd be left with five cards to my five. This would have to run into the Little Exorcist. And he'd have a Recruit. 
I'd play a Sanjin, make a recruit. Eh, I really would rather he didn't have Consecration, but I guess it's not the end of the world. Still have three Sunwalkers in here, so if I can kind of hang even, I might be okay. Oh, jeez. Please don't hit the Little Exorcist. It hit the Little Exorcist. Okay, so this guy took a chance with the Bomb Lobber, and it pretty much is going to win him the game, because if that thing had lived, it could have killed the Lobber, but since it died, I don't actually have the ready kill for this. Fuck. All right, we're going to take a little bit of a risk. I'm going to play Senjin instead of the Sunwalker. And I'm going to make a recruit instead of using Seal of Light plus a recruit to kill that. I'm going to try to use Senjin to kill the Lobber. When you're behind, take risks. He took a risk. One in three chance of getting surging wildly ahead, and it worked. I got to take a risk back. What we do. Hmm, that's annoying. So Seal of Light plus both recruits kills this. But this only thing would stay at one health, and then the Senjin would actually have to trade for it. And then I also wouldn't have enough mana to play Sunwalker. But if I run the Senjin into it and a Recruit, then my Recruit dies and I still don't get to kill the Lobber. Fuck. That's annoying. So if I Seal of Light to kill this, it sucks. Okay, gonna have to keep taking risks. Yep. The battle. The battle. For justice. Oh, la -dee da And there's really no reason now to not kill it because... He could have put a Divine Shield on it. So he's got six to five. I have some big drops, but I'm behind on the board. I mean, it, it looks like I'm ahead because I have creatures and he doesn't, but he's got to play an eight man on a full hand. So I'm pretty much going to be behind after whatever he plays. So I'm catching up with the Sunwalker and stuff. Okay. That was actually really pretty tame. I think, as tempting as it is to hammer that, I'm going to play Sunwalker and a Recruit. Gotta get some board presence. Got Justice League and an Ogre. I need to get big stuff down so I can play it back to back. Every turn you delay playing a big creature when you have a whole bunch of big creatures, you potentially dig yourself a hole you can't recover from. So why Sunwalker and not Ogre? Well, because the Sunwalker protects my other stuff. Protects him from using the Shredder to chip away at my board position. Does he have something? Okay. This could really honestly have been a whole lot worse. If he's just popping shields, that's fine. What would have been bad is if he had a recruit out, he could have popped the shield with the recruit. And then dealt real damage, but this is okay. Justice, Justice League is admittedly a pretty intimidating play right there, because it'll kill the Sunwalker. <sighs> True Silver stops me from playing Ogre. Let's think, though. I could True Silver plus the Golem to kill the Guardian. The two Recruits can kill that. Sunwalker can kill that. Oh, sure, Hammer of Wrath can kill that. Sunwalker can kill whatever drops out. Then I clear the board, still have a Sunwalker and a damaged Golem. I think that's the move, isn't it? It's got to be. Is there a better allocation here? I could Hammer... Uh, three. So I could... No, True Silver plus Golem, I think, is the way on this. Hammer this, recruits on that. Yeah, that that's the move. Okay, so the, the hammer goes on here, so I gotta do that first. Always draw cards first. And by all means, I mean sometimes, if you're me. He actually got Millhouse Mana Storm, the best possible drop. Ah, that's unfortunate. Well, that still doesn't change my plans. It's still a matter of this. And this. And that, and that, and that. And I got a weapon and a damaged golem, and of more damage than it should have been Sunwalker. Creatures, I can only play one at a time, so I've really got to get this ogre down next turn if I can. True Silver, okay, so the uh, consolation is this would have died regardless, because whatever two drop had fallen out, unless it was like Lorewalker Cho, Sunwalker was going to take at least one damage. This is an interesting move, so it'll die to my True Silver. And that's an interesting move, because that'll die to my golem. I don't understand. Why not just play a recruit, which kills the golem, and also the truth, this was going to die to a true silver regardless. I think my opponent just goofed a bit. Well, that's fine by me. So we're going to do that. We're going to do that. And think. Do I play this and give it divine shield and taunt? Or do I play this in a recruit for the extra board presence? I think I need to get the board presence here. 
I think every point of damage counts. I'm a little bit ahead, just a bit ahead on cards. I gotta press the advantage. I think there's no rush to give this Divine Shield and Taunt. Sure, I could regret it if he like plays Hammer of Wrath or something, but I gotta, I gotta take my chances a bit. So this thing is easy to kill, and that thing doesn't do anything. Okay, this is looking good. Okay, so Cog Hammer, great if it goes on the Ogre, terrible if it goes on the Recruit. Well, not too terrible. Yeah, not too terrible. Do I want to play another creature first, though? Just to improve the odds of it not being on the Recruit? I think that would make sense. Do I play this guy? Why don't we just play this guy? Wait a minute, here's the answer. Why don't we just do this? Then the Cog Hammer's guaranteed to go somewhere good. Okay, it goes there, and then I can still kill the Micro Machine there. Okay, so the Shredder plus the True Silver does kill the Ogre, unfortunately. But I've got a 5-6, this, and this. This time I didn't get quite as lucky. In fact, it's quite fortunate that the Mill House wasn't here, because I really like that the Cog Hammer kills off this drop. That's pretty significant. Alright, it's the last card. Let's see it. Ah, not a big deal. It just dies to my guy, so I should win now. Let's see, we kill... Do I use the Rocketeer to kill that, actually? Might as well. Kill that. Kill that. Kill that. Recruit or the Cleric. I think I'm just gonna go for a Recruit. I think every point of... Every extra card matters now, and this is like giving myself an extra card. I've got plenty of mana, so I should be able to play this stuff next turn, unless I top deck another Sunwalker or something. Coghammer definitely gave me the edge that I needed. In a pretty big wage. In a pretty big way. Wage? What the heck? Man Bomber, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, well, I'm definitely doing this. So I might as well then do this. Nope. Nope. And nope. Alright. Well, let's kill that off. Kill this off. Make a recruit. I'm gonna put it on the Mad Bomber. The reason putting it on the Mad Bomber is in case he top decks a Consecration, putting it on the Recruit would have been... He kills off three things. This way he only kills off two. Health is fine, especially with Seal of Light. I got a bit of removal. Board advantage. And... Okay. Well, I had an Epic. He has a Legendary. It's only fair. So, I don't actually want him to get a Burly Rockjaw Trog. Can I kill him? What is this? 5, 9, 10, 13... 17. Nope. So we gotta do this. And this. And that. And that. Unfortunately, my hand kinda sucks. Kinda sucks. I gotta get... Do I have any more Sunwalkers? I think I do. I think I still have two of them in here. But that was a bit of a slip. He now could catch up. Duty. That's what he's reporting for. Antique Healbots. Well, let's do this. Seven, eight. I couldn't have killed him. Get a spare part, see what it is. Plus one attack. Oh, that, now when I actually would have not minded the plus one health. Maybe plus one attack. That is just great. Oh, man. I really either need a seal of light to kill this, sad as it is, or use the Shatters and Cleric to kill it. Let's seal of light. Keep the board out. I think that's the right move. I'm not sure, though. So he's got a spare part and a card. My board is, you know, I do need to get something big, because a big creature here could actually still catch it back up for him. This gives me some insurance against Sunwalkers. But Ogre is a bit tough. I don't think this actually helps me. It doesn't really help. Is he going to emergency cool in that? He sure is. Well, joke's on him. I wasn't even going to use this guy. I was actually going to use the Cleric with the blades and then the anti kill bot to kill that ogre. There's a Sunwalker. Okay, do I still use Whirling Blades and kill off the ogre? His hand is empty. I don't know. It, let's, worst case scenario, he top decks a Consecration. Let's say I use the 3-3 to kill this. Top decks Consecration kills this, pops shield, kills this, kills this, kills this, almost kills this. Shield popped, use the ogre to kill the Sunwalker. I actually would, would lose the game. I don't really see the point 
of walking into that. Can I kill him? Six, seven, eight? No, can't kill him. Yeah, I don't see the point of walking into that, so we will take out this ogre. I've got a decent sized board now thanks to Sunwalker. I think I have another Sunwalker in the deck still. I think I have another True Silver in the deck, although I'm not quite sure of that. I just need him to miss one beat with these cards, and I'm totally good. Alright, he does not want to skip a beat, this guy. Okay, well, now I'm just going to ignore it then. So, well, I could... Uh, you know what? I could kill it. 8, 10, 11. <sighs> Screw it. I'm going to take my chances and just go for the kill. I could have killed this, but if I kept dragging this out, I might have actually started to lose. I'm threatening lethal. The Sunwalker's a huge deal. Consecration doesn't work. Because this thing survives the Spectral Knight after the Shield Pop, whereas the didn't survive the Ogre. So even with Consecration, I would have had 8 damage. I think I made the right choice. Okay, we have time for one more game. This video is going to be a little bit long, but better a little long than a little short. Although I really should quit while I'm ahead, shouldn't I? Ah, well, I already clicked the play button. And it's not like there's a cancel button or anything. Anyway, that'd be pretty sweet to win this game. That'd be a 9-0. I don't... You know, I think I've only ever been 9-0 twice. I think once was with a mage. That was before Blizzard added the 12 win maximum. That was actually when 9 wins was the most, so that was it. They're undetended. And I think Paladin is actually the other class. I should really record these sort of trifling things. Right, right, because I, I had my I had only one 12-0 run in my life, and that was with Paladin. I don't think there was any other class that made it to 9-0 with, but there might have been, and I forgot. Who cares? It's Lance Jensen. So, opening hand. Not great. Ah, Infiltrator. Again, actually, the second time steps in to save the day. I'm really glad about this aggressive choice to have some one-drops. That has really been paying off. Skipping a beat on turn two with the Recruit. It's a good thing I got this guy. Well, let's just see what happens. Yeah, he doesn't have a turn one play. Mm, if he has a turn two play, hopefully the Seal of Light will kill it. And it does not. Godly Jesus Christ. All right. Do I coin into this thing? I mean, that's risky because it's a two, three. There's no way that's the right move. I'm just going to do this and sit. So, let's just see if he, what he does. If he runs the croc into this, then fine. If he doesn't and I top deck a troop silver, then I can just coin that and kill the croc that way and let these guys live. He's got a mortal coil. So he doesn't go up a card, he just cycles a card. But the fact that he takes some board presence off is really irritating. God, this 2-3 was so good. 4-3 is even better than a 2-3. Oh, Lord. I need something good. Esperanto. And... <laughs> Speak of the devil, I actually do top deck a truce of a champion, so we're gonna kill this thing. And there's no reason to run this guy out, so I'm gonna just keep him hidden. He's been a bit lame, but the only reason he's been lame is because my opponent has such a strong start. So, the succubus did cost him a card, because I killed it with one card, and he threw a card away for it. He goes back up to equal with life tap, but that's half his mana for the turn. Fairy dragon will die to the infiltrator. Ah, I need a good 4-drop here. Shoot, and I don't have anything. Nope, that doesn't count. Alright, well, we'll kill this, and we'll kill this, and we're going to play a 2-3. Don't be fooled by the fact that it costs 3 mana. That is a 2-mana card that stopped me from playing a Recruit. That just really sucks. So here's his chance to catch back up. I have 3 6-drops, and a 2-3 on the table. So he kind of passed the buck on turn 4, but I sort of passed the buck on my turn. Alright, now he can play up to a 3-drop, and he plays a Blade Master. So here's the eternal question, right? Do you kill the Blade Master or do you kill the Summoning Portal? I'm gonna kill the Blade Master, and the reason is board presence. I think I think the board presence is significant. Now he can throw a bunch of cards down. What I'm basically doing is I'm gambling that I can deal with all of his cards, and then I'll be up a card. We'll see how that works out for me. I mean, it's pretty crazy. He could have played like a 6-drop and a 4-drop here. This is a bit weak. It dies to True Silver. He can now play up to another 5-drop. Oh, that's pretty weak. That just dies to my Exorcist. 
And is he gonna life? He should have life tapped first. That would. That's a really. I mean, that's a pretty big time to not life tap first. This was a very weak play. If this is like a good six drop, he's gonna really regret not life tapping first. Okay. Well, here we obviously kill this, and then I think I should probably kill that summoning portal. And let's see, Sunwalker doesn't protect this thing. I could cult master get a card. That seems dumb. Hmm. Is it that dumb? Cult Master, get a card. Make a recruit? It's delaying my six drops, though. Ah, this thing hits harder. I think I gotta play this. He's already thrown away a Siphon Soul to the Succubus, so it's a rare. I doubt he'd have another one. I'm ahead on cards without the Cult Master. Might as well just do this. It means Cult Master has sit in my hand for a while, but that's fine, because I got other things to play anyway. Okay, the ogre, a little awkward. Can't quite kill it. I need my Shattered Sun Cleric. I could do some interesting things. I could Hand of Protection and Seal of Light. I would take two net damage. Getting a bit risky. Or I could just throw the Exorcist at this with Cult Master. Hmm. This plus that would kill it too. If I Sunwalker, I can't play Seal of Light, which would be pretty nice to play this turn. I wonder. So basically, what about more? My Seal of Light for removal or the Sunwalker? Oh, man, that's tough. It's a tough choice. I don't like the idea of leaving this around, so if I did play Seal of Light, I would actually hit this thing and take two net damage down to 17. He's pretty blow on cards. I kill that, I kill that. All right, I'm going to go for it. Do I still play the Cult Master? Oh, I guess I would play the Cult Master then, wouldn't I? So let's do this and draw my card first before I commit to anything further. Okay, wouldn't have changed my play. Okay, so the Flame Imp kills the Cult Master, then he has three cards to mine. More than three? I've got healing. Well, it really just depends on what he does this turn. This ogre needs to be able to deal with whatever he plays. Something like a force tank max would really suck here. Thankfully that didn't happen. He plays another two drop. He's got a lot of really weak stuff, this, this deck. Maybe it's an aggro deck that got off to a slow start. Well, it wasn't a slow start. He actually had a pretty fast start. It's just, it, it didn't get, you know, the sort of dream draw that this kind of deck would hope for. He's deciding whether to race me down, and he makes the right choice. He's really got to race me here. Wow, okay, um, interesting. Now I kind of wonder if he made the right choice or not, because killing this would have prevented me from killing off his Doom Guard. Oh god, Mad Bomber. Little bit risky to play the Mad Bomber here. All right, well, let's think. If I hit that, I can't kill it. If I play this, and the Cult Master to kill that, I can kill that, let him hit me for three. Or I can play the Sunwalker. He can life tap freely, so he'd have two chances to draw an answer to Sunwalker. Hmm. So do I put my life on the Sunwalker, or do I put my and a higher health total, or do I let him damage me a bit but get rid of more stuff? I could also play this, but that, no, I can't play that this turn. Do I play the Mad Bomber? Do I dare play the Mad Bomber? I mean, I could get very lucky, kill the Blood Imp. I could kill this. I could hit this twice, and the Ogre would kill it, or I could hit my face. Ah oh, man. Okay, here's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna play this because I definitely I'm gonna do that regardless, and then I am gonna try the Mad Bomber. See what I see what happens. Nope, nope, and nope. Okay, so this now dies to the Doom Guard rather than uh, hitting it and not quite killing it. That's awesome. All right, so that's what happens. Bit of a dire situation, more dire than I was expecting. But if I can play this guy out and go up to 15 health. I mean, a 5-8 is definitely serious business, but I've got this Divine Shield in the way, so he has to deal a damage to this to be able to kill it. And then the Mad Bomber will not actually kill it, because I got the health boost. Oh, fuck. That's bad. Mad Bomber doesn't kill it, because the Blood Imp actually gave that the health boost. Oh, shoot, does he actually have a Soul Fire for the kill here? That would suck. Uh, Dark Bomb. Wow, I, he got me down to one health. I'm surprised he didn't, but I guess it makes sense, because now he's just thinking, well, I'll finish him off with Doomguard. Okay. I can't play my healer, unfortunately. 
It's not my favorite thing in the world to stay at four health versus a warlock who can life tap all he wants to, but it's what's gotta happen because the alternative was to not clear everything off. I needed to play that Rocketeer. So one more turn before I play the Guardian. He life taps looking for that Soul Fire or the Argent Commander or the Power Overwhelming. And is he bad mannering or does he actually not have it? He actually doesn't have it. Okay, he's threatening a lethal, but this has given me a chance. That thing is going to get killed by the Sunwalker. I have to confess, by the way, I, I was actually quite lucky with the, where the buff went. If this buff had gone on the Doom card, I was a 50-50 chance I would have lost. So do I play the Kodo? I could kill the pig, and then the Kodo kills either this or that. I mean, that sure is tempting, but then I don't get to play Justice League. I think here I might as well just play Justice League. Because I can kill everything but that Blood Imp regardless. Interesting. Ah, uh, it doesn't help me. Bonkity, bonkity. I'm not playing the spiders because I think it's worth it to get as many extra cards as I can. So 10 health is a bit better since he's out of cards. He can life tap freely, but eventually it's going to become dangerous for him because, of course, 2 damage a turn and I've got a 5 hitting thing here. It's going to add up. If this does not kill the Blood Imp, I'm going to be angry. Alright, it did. And it hit him more than it hit me, so I really can't complain about that. That was great. And he heals up. Okay, so the Kodo actually lost its target. No max for Mr. Tinkers. Okay, well, let's swap that out. So I take one less damage. And let's play this. And this. And this. I would rather save the Kodo than save him. I'm not sure if that's the right play, but it's the play I'm going to make. Six damage. Theoretically, I could lose if he life taps and finds six damage. That's possible. Blue Gold Warrior plus Soul Fire, or Power Overwhelming and Soul Fire, or two Power Overwhelmings, or you know, whatever the hell. Uh, he's gonna kill this, I assume, so I've got three, four, five damage, not enough to kill. It's it's dicey. I really thought I actually was doing very well this game, and then... Oh man, he found a Hellfire. Well, that's unfortunate, because now... Oh, even... Is that worse? Is that better or worse? I guess that's actually worse. Because I can't kill this thing, and it's threatening lethal. Shoot. Oh, shoot. I have to either throw both of these things at it, or I have to leave it alive and let him hit me down to two health. Well, I could top deck the win. No, no, no! Oh, man, you've got to be kidding me. Well, it's better than dying to that, which I would have had he gotten it a few turns earlier, but now this thing threatens to kill me. Sunwalker. Pretty good card. Pretty good as far as cards go. So we have to do this, unsexy as it is, because I need the Sunwalker's Divine Shield up against the 6-6. Six, six. He can life tap again and try to find an answer to this. He's already answered one Sunwalker. That was, I was, I've been lucky. I can't complain about luck. I've been lucky that he didn't get that soul fire earlier, and I was lucky that the Blood Imp didn't buff his Doom Guard. So does he have a way to pop the shield? He's already used a lot of removal. This is a bit scary. And that's it. Okay. Oh my God, I have the kill. Wow, that was a close game. So that Warlock has a strong deck and is a good player. We just got a little bit lucky and won. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed that video. And if you did, please like and or subscribe. We'll be back soon to see where this goes from here. Take care, everybody. See you soon.